I'm here to tell you that I've seen the future, and it looks like this. And here's the Puma 1-2. Puma 1 19.1, not the 1-2, because that was a takedown model of the old Puma 1. What's going on, guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you a video today to share with you my first impressions of Puma's brand new boot lineup for 2019, which includes the brand new Puma Future 19.1, as well as a low cut variation that I haven't really seen around that much, but it does in fact exist. And of course, the new refreshed Puma 1 19.1. I guess I'll start with the question that I have been asked over a hundred times today, and that is, will I be reviewing the new future and the new Puma 1? And the answer to that question is yes. Yes, I will. And hopefully those reviews will be happening within the next week or so. As soon as I can get my hands on the boots, I will make some videos. And if you want to miss out on those reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when those videos go live. I should also mention that if you're interested in pre-ordering any of these new Puma boots, you can actually get them below their normal retail prices with some SR4U coupon codes at the first link down below. Go ahead and check that out. Really quickly, I just want to go over the naming system that Puma is going with now. It's kind of like what Adidas this is doing where you have the 16.1, 17.1, 18.1. It kind of just represents the year of release. But for Puma, they've kind of had one model in the middle that doesn't make a lot of sense in the overall lineage. So we had the Puma Future 18.1, then we got the Puma Future 2.1, and now we have the 19.1. And then the Puma 1 line went Puma 1 17.1, then Puma 1 18.1, then Puma 1 1, and now it's back to the 19.1 name. So kind of confusing, but that's what they've done. So starting off with the Future 19.1, I have to say that I'm pretty pleased with what they've done. These are the changes that I was hoping they would make. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with the Future 2.1 that it replaces. This is a boot that has been my go-to basically since it came out about six months ago, which is important to note because Puma seems to be running on a six month cycle, not just for the Future, but also for the Puma One line, which is very, very quick as far as a turnover is concerned for top end models, quicker than what you'll find from Adidas, which typically runs their models for about nine months before we get something new. And then Nike, which has been on basically a two year cycle, for the longest time, although that probably will change sooner rather than later. So the future 19.1 price stays the same as the previous model at $220, which I think is a really good deal considering that everything from Nike and Adidas retails for more than that. So from a value for money perspective, while well, 220 is not cheap, it's cheaper than the competition. And then we also have to consider that this is pretty much the first major redesign we've seen for the Puma future and the net fit concept. Gone is the netting material that is essentially draped over top of the base synthetic upper where you have this extra netting on the underside of all this fuse running everywhere for the sake of, I guess, creating some uniformity in regards to touch on the ball, which works fine. These boots feel great, but it's not exactly the most elegant way of, I guess, implementing this net fit system on the upper. The new Future 19.1, as you can see, now features a net fit system minus any kind of mesh. It's all incorporated into what they're calling an Evo Knit Pro Upper that has this interesting 3D texturing kind of fused into the toe and heel area to, I assume, give it some structure as well as provide some kind of, I guess, variation on the touch so it's just not completely smooth. What's interesting about this is I'm going to assume that it has to be at least a little bit stiff because if you're going to have the holes within a knitted upper, those holes can't be stretchy, not just because you want the boot to have solid lockdown when you pull the laces through, but you also don't want those holes tearing. And that was a major concern for a lot of people with the exposed net material. It's not something you would typically see on the upper of a football boot. So I think the way they've done it now is just more sleek, more elegant, and it's gonna create for less bulk on the upper. So I do expect the upper to have a slightly thinner feel on the ball than what we've had from the first two variations of the Puma Future. Something that I've seen a lot of people point out in comments is that the actual holes in the upper for the net fit system are a lot less significant than what we had on the Future 2.1 and the 18.1, meaning that you just have less options to create your own custom lacing system, which is kind of the whole point of the Puma Future net fit concept. But I still feel like there's enough there to where you can create a custom fit and feel within what they've given you. Would I like to have more options? Absolutely, but I think what's there is going to work perfectly fine. I don't see that as a major issue. Something else that struck me as a bit of a concern are the holes directly into the side of the upper. The net fit system allowed them to create a base upper and then just have the netting sit on top. Now the holes are directly in the Evo knit upper, 
which means that that is a direct route for water to get inside of your boots. Now there is a liner on the inside in blue for this particular colorway. It looks to be some kind of a neoprene or probably a mesh based synthetic material, but still water can basically just seep right through those holes directly. I'm sure the liner will get wet pretty quickly and your feet will also get wet quickly because of those direct holes on both sides of the upper. So in terms of water resistance, I don't expect these to be all that great. Beyond that, the overall shape of the boot doesn't look too far off the future 2.1. It maintains a very similar cut to the collar itself made out of that knitted material which I don't mind I really like how this collar looks and then it has the exact same sole plate and stud pattern which is not a bad thing at all T-backs construction nice flexibility to it and it is an FGAG stud pattern as well which is always nice to have there's also a low cut variation of the future 19.1 available right off the bat which we've never really seen before with the launch of a new future it retails for $200 rather than $220 so it's $20 less than the mid cut variation. And as you can see by the pictures, it features a slightly different construction across the top of the foot for the low cut design. And then the heel area is a pretty traditional construction as far as cut and overall look is concerned. Not a huge difference in performance, at least I wouldn't expect there to be. Likely the fit will be pretty similar as well, but it's nice that they give you that option if you don't like the mid cut look. And then the other new boot introduced by Puma is the Puma 1 19.1, which is set to replace the Puma 1 1, which was introduced just six months ago. Now, unlike the Puma Future 19.1, it's not really a major redesign. It's more of a subtle refresh, if anything. It's pretty much the exact same thing that we had with the K-Leather variation of the Puma 1.1, but instead of this kind of circular dimpled texturing slash liner material in the kangaroo leather area, as well as here on the Puma form stripe, it now has this kind of wavy pattern. So from a fit, feel, and overall performance perspective, I'm curious to try them out, but honestly, I don't expect them to feel any different from the Puma 1.1 whatsoever. And also, unlike when they launched the Puma 1.1, there does not appear to be a synthetic upper variation available, and I don't think they're gonna make one if I'm being honest. I think the leather version of the Puma 1.1 was unanimously considered the best. Every pro wearing boot seems to wear the leather variation as well. So this time around for the 1.19.1, it'll probably only be available with the K-Leather toe. And the price stays the same at $200. They also unveiled this today. It's called the Puma Future Rocket with a retail price of $150. And as you can see, it's kind of weird looking in a good way though, at least I think so. It has an upper variation of the Future 19.1. And then the outsole is taken directly from the hybrid rocket running shoe that I've yet to try. Really curious about those as well. But hopefully I can get my hands on these if enough of you guys wanna see a review. Anyways guys, those are my first impressions of Puma's new lineup for 2019 let me know what you guys think of what they've done here down below in the comments which of these models are you most excited to try out if any at all um, because that's kind of always the question whenever Puma comes out with something really really good are they ever going to close the gap on Nike or Adidas in regards to popularity I'm not sure that either of these boots will do it but I definitely think that they are making strides in the right direction with the boots that they've been putting out basically for the last two years or so. The future concept I think is excellent. People need to give it a try. And once they do give it a try, I could see a lot of people definitely making the switch because they are legitimately that good. And I'm really curious to see how this new 19.1 is going to be. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please support it with a like. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.